Celestial Invitational. Uh, we've had two matches so far. Kalento winning his 3-2 uh, over Shadowy and Tom winning his match 3-1 over Chaoshen. I want to remind everyone that you can catch the YouTube VODs of this on my YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash d2hs. Now that I have my shameless plug out of the way, I also want to... Uh, say thank you to Temple Storm for allowing us to broadcast on their channel as well and get this to as many viewers as possible. Uh, now we have a really cool matchup next. It's Kalento versus Tom60229. And uh, this is a rematch of the finals at uh, PAX Prime, also known as the Onog series, also known as the Geico series. And uh, just really cool to see these guys going at it again. Really awesome players. And uh, let's see what they are bringing for Kalento. Looks like it's going to be a Control Warrior, uh, Standard, Combo Druid, and what looks to be like a mid-range Paladin. So what do you think about Kalento's choices here, Kaldi? It's pretty strong. Um, I really like the Warrior. The Druid seems strong as well, and the Paladin. On top of that, it's just... This seems like his, 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 uh, his go-to matchup. I feel like maybe he was thinking, okay, I'll, I'll just win the first series, win the second series, and just nothing to worry about the third series that much. But yeah... Uh, um, one noteworthy thing is playing Sylvanas instead of Justicar in uh, Midrange Paladin. That's, that's very unusual, but strong, I guess, against both Druid and, and uh, a few other things. Not that strong in the control matchups, but now Tom is up next. See what he is bringing. Yeah, we see Tom on the screen there showing that he's uh, from Taiwan on the first line there. And looks like it's going to be a uh, Midrange Druid with Raptors and the Harrison. Uh, then followed by the uh, mid-range Paladin with Sylvanas and Justicar. And finally going to be an aggressive Shaman. No? Just kidding. It's going to be a mid-range Shaman deck uh, with, you know, Alakir and Fire Elementals and Zombie Chows as well as the Tunnel Trug. So kind of like a mid rangey uh, deck that can kind of burst you down with that Bloodlust and the Doom Hammer. What do you think about that one? He's got Gormok here. He's got Bran. This is a super, super weird Shaman deck. Half aggro, it's more aggro than midrange, I feel, but because there's no Azure Drakes. I know, so, no. Yeah, it looks like it's yeah. a battle cry. A battle cry Shaman deck? I mean, Gormok, I guess it's a battle cry. You could deal 8 damage with Gormok if you have Brown on the board, but. Eh? Right. I mean, uh, well, just, I imagine, did you see this work? I yeah. imagine you go 8 damage to face, right? I mean, you can't split up the damage from Gormok. You can't no, no, you pick can't, yeah. two things. So, I mean, that would be pretty imbalanced, right? You go for Gormok uh, with the brand and just snipe off two guys right away, uh, like AoE. But, um, yeah, going to be interesting to see if that uh, Shaman can work. By the way, guys, if you aren't, un if you aren't aware, these players had to uh, pick their lineups, but they didn't know who they were playing against when they, you know, pick their their decks against uh, the certain, or uh, or pick the decks for the matches that they're going to be playing in. So, uh, for example, Tom said, "Okay, match one, playing Mage Hunter Row. Match two, Druid Paladin Shaman." Didn't know, basically going in blind, and you basically just had to put together a good, solid deck against a certain. Uh, matchups. Uh, we interviewed Firebat on the first day, and he mentioned, you know, targeting certain uh, clumps of decks. Like, for instance, you know, oftentimes people will pair together Druid and Paladin, which we do see both of these players have paired Druid and Paladin together. So, uh, interesting to see uh, the kind of strategies that these pe these players are putting together in order to combat certain, uh, you know, classes that usually are paired together. Yeah, this is pretty painful. I Really dislike him keeping this feather. It's not the strongest, the uh, strongest card against, no, against the uh, paladin. Well, he can Generally go because for of the Aldor, yeah. He but, can yeah. go for mm -hmm. the turn one shredder, which is, uh, you know, you can't get Aldor quite that quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty strong uh, overall. A uh, pretty strong handle roll by Tom. Good for Clento as well. Has a one into two into you know a two drop on three. But yeah, Tom can go turn one shredder into turn two wild growth into turn three shredder, which is um, obviously really powerful. Mm -hmm. I guess there's also the option of just coining wild growth now and going for the raptor into shredder. But I, I like the shredder better than anything here. Going for turn one shredder, but generally it's not that strong against paladin. And the reason is you don't win by bursting the paladin down. You win by stopping their tide. This type of Paladin almost plays like a suit style deck here, so it's about playing a lot of small minis and getting advantages through that. Dealing with your... Whereas Su is more about buffing your own minions, Paladin is more about uh, neutralizing your opponent's minions. But we see a yeah, turn Ooh. one better, easy play. 
yeah, the Aldor comes into the hand of Kalento, and uh, now we see Kalento kind of <laughs> looks like he's a bit sleepy there, uh, wondering what to do here. I imagine it's going to be the knife juggler because even if Tom gets the quote unquote free trade onto this uh, zombie chow, Kalento could snipe it off, snipe off the uh, last health there on the shredder, uh, you know, with his next coming minion. Uh, do you think he'll play the Aldor even though it could, uh, even though the shredder could get sniped off anyway? I think it's the strongest play, unless top top takes a one drop. If it top takes a one drop, then I think the second juggler would be the play. But ooh, gets it and gets a ooh. patient assassin, which I imagine Tom wants to use right now before it dies to any juggler shenanigans. I think so. Yeah, you just gotta slam the sweater and then kill the juggler. But yeah, that puts Tom ahead in my opinion. Uh, Colento does have the true sliver though, and that's gonna be pretty important now coming into this. Especially, I guess, what type of minion Tom gets out of the second setter. If it's going to be a 2-3, he would be decently behind. He has the option, I guess, of Raptor and Hero Power, but what do you think about the Raptor uh, as a card? His inclusion? Oh, yeah, as a card. I think it's pretty nice. Uh, it's a nice anti-aggro card, and we're seeing a lot of aggro, especially with the Shaman. Uh, it seems to be what people are, you know, at, you know, directing their decks toward that uh, just having a lot of aggression and it looks like he's just going to take out the Aldo realizing that his uh, Shredder has enough health as it is and doesn't need to be worrying about that Knife Juggler so I think that's what he was kind of agonizing over with the Patient Assassin but yeah, I do like the Raptor um, I mean sometimes you can kind of hedge your bets and put you know sh uh, Shades and Raptors in your deck although you can't really put more than three without your um, your overall power suffering a bit, but uh, I think I'm okay with the Raptor. Good to you know deal with aggro a bit better than the Shade, which typically has to trade in early on anyway. So sometimes you don't get that value. I gotta admit, yeah, I'm impressed by Tom by killing the Aldor. It's better against True Silver, and and it's a possibility that Quanto has True Silver. People generally only run one because people are now so obsessed with the older man and the Shredder and, and all Ooh. those good. He gets the Doom say That's Pretty much perfect. Well, I mean, I guess it's the same thing as having like a, a 2 3, right? Or mm -hmm. a 3 2 doesn't really matter. In the end, it trades for the juggler. So, one of the less uh, impactful Doom series you're ever going to see. Basically, it, it's as if, you know, Clint, uh, Tom got uh, a standard 2 drop and then Kalento hit the face and then Tom traded with him. So, kind of the same thing here. But um, yeah, uh, we got to see some a little bit of fireworks with that Doom series, I suppose. An important thing to mention, though, uh, in, in this case, is, is, is uh, that Colanto actually hasn't slept. He was tweeting out that he just didn't get any sleep. Ooh. I mean, this is so early in, in 43 EU, especially. So I'm, I'm just an hour earlier than, than, than Colanto, so he must be feeling it now. But yeah, uh, going a, a whole day without sleeping and a whole night and now then playing, it's kind of tough. Yeah, and playing in a very difficult group as well, uh, with Chaoshin and Tom in this group. Not to mention Shadowy, who is, uh, you know, a guy who plays in a lot of those online qualifiers. So, uh, yeah, pretty good so far, at least for him to be able to win that first match. But, you know, his obviously his work is cut out for him for these next two matches as well. Um, death Rattle off of Death Rattle is not too bad for Tom. <laughs> Gets to maybe refill his hand. Let's see if this Knife Trigger hits. Nope, does not hit. And uh, Tom gonna have a decision here. He can use the uh, as the uh, the knife juggler kind of misses again. But uh, Tom can use the force of nature to start clearing up this board. Let's see if he potentially goes for that. Um, I think he has to. Yeah, there seems doesn't seem to be another option in, in my book at least. He could fully clear. Maybe he's gonna go for the web spinner and try to get something out of that. But it just. Seems inferior here. Yeah, this has to be it. Yeah, and I mean, he picks up the Savage Roar, but I mean, realistically, you're never going to be able to use that card to be, uh, to, you know, burst on your opponent anyway. So, going to be this. Let's see where the Knife Juggler or the Knife lands. Goes to face, so pretty inconsequential there. And, uh, yeah, probably, it's going to probably just steal this mini bot. So it's a nice minion to take. No question about that, yeah. Um, so, looking at the. What seems to be the web spinner still have uh, happening, but Colando does have Doctor Boom. This seems to be the perfect time for Doctor Boom. Big game hunter follow up though. Yeah. So is Tom must be running over this game. I mean, Colando having so many weapons. That's the reason. Another reason people don't want to run two two slivers is if you drop both of them, you're in some trouble. 
Yeah, this is exactly the reason why. Whereas, you know, sometimes if you have, sometimes people uh, replacing the second truth silver for a second cog hammer, for instance, because, you know, second cog hammer does have that utility that you can always have uh, with your hero power. Uh, but in this case, obviously, like you say, the uh, second truth silver doing Clento no favors. He's wondering whether or not he should play. I mean, I, I imagine he's not wondering about whether he should play Doctor Room. He's wondering whether he should use his truth silver on one of these minions or not. Seems pretty bad to use it on either of these minions, but since he has so many weapons, uh, he might go for that. And yeah, it looks like he is going to clear that web swinger, make it a bit difficult for Tom to clear off the boom bots. Uh, basically force a hero power out and prevent something like uh, an Ancient of Lore coming down. And we see the Ancient of Lore. Also Acid Maw. <laughs> so, um, huh. Yeah. Do you not know how many times I've, I've been playing my Control Hunter and faced Acid Maw? Out of a Ram Wrangler, it's the worst feeling, honestly. <laughs> Things just fall apart. You're ahead, you know, you have your Kel'Thuz out thrown out, you have your Dr. Boom just killed by a, a hound. Yeah, it's, it's, it's made of my assistance, honestly. <laughs> it's kind of funny how we got to this point, though, right? Like, how, why does people just tuning in right now, wait, why does Tom, or how does Tom have, a, have an Acid Maw in his hand playing Druid? What, what happened? But uh, actually, and then uh, console gate pretty good pickup for Clento, just uh, mentioning that. And uh, Flame Imp is arguably the best drop he could have gotten out of that um, that Mountain Raptor. But Clento has an easy answer. But on the back end of that, Tom has basically the best card in the game for you know refilling your hand and providing a threat on the board. Clento can't even kill this, and um, Tom has a decision to either play this or Nasus or not. I imagine you just play it just to get this true silver out of the way. Yeah, why not? Uh, but Clanto really impresses me by going for the True Sliver last turn. Because now he had the option of, of possibly going for the Cockhammer and a minion before that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Whereas if he goes for the Cockhammer first and kills the, uh, and kills the Flame MP, he doesn't have the option to give something Divine Shield. So this is strong. Yeah, and even the mana consideration, right? He had the mana to go for the True Silver, so uh, just go for that, and you could potentially draw something that could uh, fill up your curve later, like, uh, you know, Murloc Knight or Keeper of Oldamon, something like that. And uh, in any case, Tom is in a pretty dominating position, not, you know, too worried about dying anytime soon, and at the same time has a pretty full hand plus the board lead, so, yeah, looking pretty solid for Tom and uh, pretty desperate for Kalento here. No question about that. I mean, this is supposed to be the easy matchup here for Colento, and he just this is run dry. Thomas had everything he could ever want. Master is so horrible. He can't clear the emperor. And <laughs> he's and just, just giving up. He's just gonna give up. Doesn't want to show uh, the cards in his deck. And uh, Tom is gonna pick up that first game. I guess going over that game once more. I mean, we looked at their early hands, and it seemed you know pretty even. As far as you know, how good their starts were. Tom obviously having an amazing start with the the coin innervate shredder into you know wild growth, and then the shredder again, as well as those mountain raptors to keep the pressure on. Uh, Clento, on the other hand, had you know a zombie town knife juggler, knife juggler, and uh, mini bot, as well as some other cards. But uh, the the big story is that the reason why Paladin is favored in that matchup is they're so much more consistent at getting those early leads, and then you know pushing that to a victory later on in the game, whereas. You know, drawing basically uh, coming going to a stalemate is a victory for the druid because their their deck is so much more dense and able to draw into those bigger threats, which was uh, well exactly what we saw. Yeah, no question here. But going to be going with Paladin versus Warrior now. Ooh. I think this is all about playing it correctly. I feel like the Paladin has the edge, but it's very easy to overextend into a brawl. Right now, double armor smith is strong generally because it messes up the hero power of Paladin but with a zombie Chao and into uh, into the uh, juggler it's just not as good now no fire win actually yet doesn't manage to top deck it here is is yeah this is like an option to coin yes yeah, like, okay he goes for that but I mean wow. you want the fire win next instead yeah, it's gonna go for the coin here, which means that Tom knows that he can play this must server battle without any uh, death spike coming for another turn. And there's the Justice card. That's a key card in this matchup. Uh, just being able to make two dudes at once. I mean, just the just the normal Paladin hero power is a nightmare for the control warrior to deal with. Having to deal with, you know, basically double that is going to just cause headaches for Clinto, I think. No question here. The actual pain. 
Ooh. Those come down, the and the old one for the right on time. Yeah. Oh my goodness! The one bad thing is now he's committing a bit uh, much into brawl, but you know we're still one turn off of that. I mean, still, it's all, it's it's only three cards, and he's cleared two up so far. So I think, yeah, this couldn't have been better, honestly. Maybe maybe with a true sliver, but Bass comes down. He has the option of a of a death battle, which I, I imagine ha have has to be the answer here. He could kill the Ultraman and then possibly even the Master, but it's you know, it's not the cleanest thing. Yeah. Now Tom has the has the Justice Guard, whereas Colento doesn't have the Justice Guard in his deck, and the Justice Guard is so strong against particularly uh, Warrior. Um, I think. Wait, Colento, I believe, has Justice Guard in this deck, right? But not the other, not the Paladin. Yeah, that's true. I believe so. All right. So I mean, Justice Guard for the Warrior is a way to kind of fend off the Justice Guard from the Paladin, so that uh, even if you're facing two you know, Silverhand recruits a turn, you don't take as much damage from them, obviously, since you're tanking up. But, um, you know, that's kind of here, neither here nor there. Clento has to deal with this mess first. And uh, with this death bite, bite hitting the field, um, do you think Tom commits his Sludge Belcher or just uses the hero power? Because, obviously, you don't want to. You don't want your Sludge Belcher dying so easily uh, to that death bite. Usually, it's pretty hard to uh, kill a Sludge Belcher without the second side of the death bite, but gonna go super aggressive is Tom and gonna commit that card even to a potential brawl. I kinda like it as, you know, if there's no brawl, this is going to be almost game ending. He has so much burst, he has the adjusted card to really put on the pressure in the late game. Uh, I feel like this is doable, but the monkey coming down from Colento being an option yeah. Would it actually even possibly be needed here? I mean, or or possibly Bash even. Yeah, Bash. I mean, you're killing either a three-one or a two-two zombie chow, which I guess if you want to stay alive could be a, a play here. Uh, Fierce Monkey obviously being nice for the control one to have in its arsenal, so that you don't you know just skip turn three. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be uh, Armor Smith into Fierce Monkey. Nope, it's going to be Armor double Armor Smith looks like. And uh, are we going to see an execute? Looks like it's going to be case going to be the case. Excuse me, going to be on to the three one, I believe, so that we don't get any uh, free kills on these armor smiths. But uh, yeah, really defensive play from Clento. Really feeling the heat, and um, from Tom, yeah, just going to be that just a car kill off one of these armor smiths because you know, two more two armor smiths on the field just gains way too much armor. And uh, this game is kind of sort of stabilizing, but, you know, the uh, the threat of that double dude every turn is just, uh, it might be too much for Kalento. I mean, he must be happy, though, having saved the Bash now. This is really going to, you can clear the board with Bash to fire your win axe here. But things looking good for Tom, though, still. I mean, one Tyrion or Boom or, or Leon Hansen, he has everything he could ever want. He also gets two, two dudes per turn here. The Amber Smith will be helpful. But the monkey comes down. Yeah, nice clean kill on this fierce monkey. Uh, it's nice to have that monkey uh, just to you know provide some board presence. But um, you know, in this case, not going to be providing too much resistance with that uh, true silver in play. Um, Tom is kind of laid off the aggression, but I mean, it did have a pretty you know good effect on the game. Basically, by being so aggressive, Tom was able to force out and execute, and that's kind of a a lesson for you know newer players. Even if you aren't finishing out the game, sometimes you can put so much pressure on your opponent that it forces out a, you know a, a desperate response, like we saw. Yeah, not you can't be going for the value play if you're almost dead, but now Colento, thirty-three health. Uh... It's looking to be an exciting game. Should be largely down to how these players Ooh. decide to act. But oof, wow, oof, that oof. is now suddenly a lot of pressure. And I was gonna say, you know, Clento had the. I mean, obviously Tom has the Justice card in play, but Clento had, you know, the more beefy minions to be able to uh, play. So it would be kind of, you know, which can win out the uh, beefier minions or that that uh, superior hero power. But uh, now Clento just needs a brawl. <laughs> this is looking dire once again. He has some health though to uh, stem the tide of, of all of these three threes, and if you look at Acolyte, it's it's not the worst draw you could have. I mean, it's no brawl, but it, it still it gets him at least one draw and slows things down a little bit. So it's kind of like a seal block with three almost. Um, as you do take up three damage to kill it, but now 
What if you play the Sylvanas and just kind of uh, force Tom to trade into it? Because Tom isn't really close to having lethal. And if you play the Sylvanas first, then uh, Tom might be afraid of a brawl coming out that would guarantee that his board gets cleared, since the Sylvanas obviously would steal the last minion. So, I mean, maybe Tom, he, uh, you know, plays two more dudes and trades two of his 3-3s three in, and then maybe you win that 50-50, uh, that you grab another 3-3, three three, so you could take a lot of minions off the board. Looks like that's not going to be the play for Clinto, though. Going to go with that Sludge Bolter and Acolyte. I think it's all in on the Brawl here, but I feel like, yeah, Tom would be too good to fall for something like that, because you could just kill whatever 3-3 three three comes out of the Sylvana if there's a Brawl with the True Silver. So it's going for face would have been the correct call there. Uh, now, does he use the quartermaster? Yeah, it just might... keeps on the pressure. This seems seems strong. Yeah, it might just yeah, it's going to just be a hero power. Oh no, no hero. Just gonna also commit uh, the mini bot to the board. Fills up the entire board, so even more you know dangerous to brawl. But obviously knows that it's not in Clinto's hand yet. Clinto gets two draws to draw into it. Has the execute, and now the cruel taskmaster. Not going to be too much help, and uh, Tom is closing in on lethal, actually, with uh, such a huge board. Yeah, one of the worst cards to get here for Colento, and is Tom possibly running away with this whole series? Now he's 1-0 up, looking to be 2-0 up, looking to get three, three tries with the Xiaoman. I mean, the Xiaoman does have Gormok and Bran, but it's still... <laughs> It's still Xiaoman. You can you can run away with Doomhammers and, and, and Lava Burst and just kill you. Yeah, and so. especially if it faces against the Control Warrior. I mean, a lot of times Control Warrior is content to let, you know, a board full of totems just sit there uh, until, you know, you find it necessary to brawl. But uh, Tom does have that Bloodlust, so that could be a surprise. Clento feeling pressured enough to use an exec another Execute here. And, um, yeah, that's going to be... His last executes, and uh, he only has one shield stem left too. We saw him use it right away against the knife juggler. Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, though, overall, if you're looking at uh, at the uh, possibility of the shaman, I feel like against war he may actually run into trouble because of the brawl. Uh, now, generally, a shaman could just keep on using Asher Drakes and and. and draw through that, but the, uh, the Shaman is, is very aggressive compared to the general mid-range Shaman. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it could be, I mean, it's definitely something to consider as far as next game. I guess we should uh, keep it on this game while we're at it. Uh, what can Kalento possibly do here to come back? Hello? Did we, did we lose you? Yeah, yeah, it, this seems to be, Sorry. <laughs> ha, ha, has to be the brawl here, I mean, there's nothing else that can really keep, I mean, Geron, possibly, yeah, I mean, Geron would be an option, but, yeah, now it just seems to be too late, sadly, you can <laughs> pick him onto <laughs> the, uh, the battle, was... but he doesn't want to see more, sh show more cards. Yeah. I guess he had an app response, right, I asked him, what can he do here, um, I, I guess, I guess nothing. So, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be game. Tom is, a, is able to take that with the Paladin. Uh, that is pretty a pretty favorite matchup as long as you play it correctly. And uh, especially that Justicar is just so much pressure to play against, uh, to go against for that Warrior. And uh, it's going to be two games to zero, like I just mentioned. And Shaman remaining for Tom. We were talking about it uh, for a little bit there, seeing what his prospects were. But now we're going to see it put to the test. His uh, mid-range kind of battle cry focus Shaman. Uh, we're going to see if it can take a game against Clento's lineup of Warrior, Druid, and Paladin. Going to see the Paladin first, it seems. I think the Paladin yeah, is going to be probably the best deck against Shaman. So Clento starting off strong here. As every single game will matter. It's not... It's not the uh, the double uh, ECS format where you just win the winners match and you're through. It's generally not how like this goes, but uh, um, throwing away a three drop and a four drop. It's interesting. I guess the brand is more of a late game card. Yeah, Maybe brand is absolutely. Yeah, brand is definitely more of a, a late game card. I would surmise. Um, but uh, and the four drop might be a bit too slow, especially against the paladin, which is just so strong. So, uh, Tom with amazing start once again. Uh, Kalanto can kind of mirror it, but uh, obviously he's going to be going second. So going to be a bit behind every single turn from here on out. Was that a was that a second zombie chow? Or are we Looks seeing? His, yeah, his yeah. Hand? Uh, Looks like we're not seeing his hand correctly. Maybe a bit of a lag there so yeah Tom with a very solid uh, turn two play unable to play the Tuscar Totemic quite yet but uh, will be able to play that tunnel truck potentially we'll see what Clinto 
uh, has to deal with it. We saw the Knife Juggler in hand for him, uh, but just going to be a hero power. Doesn't want to give that card up. Could be something in the future to use with the uh, Muster for Battle. Tom threw away Bren, just gets it right back. The deck says, no, you want this card. <laughs> Make sure you keep it. Yeah, Tusk got Totemic, also known as Doctor 3 here. Uh, something that will always give your opponent a totem golem and it will always give you <laughs> the uh, <laughs> totem you least expect. Yeah. Generally, I mean, for me, it seems to be the Syrian totem. But yeah, now, Taunt Totem comes down. Not, not too bad here. Uh, yeah, pretty useful. Um, the Healing Totem might have been okay, but it would require Tom to... Uh, basically go face with his zombie chow, which uh, would have gotten traded into potentially with the other zombie chow anyway. Um, Tom, considering whether or not he wants to take out this 1-1, one, one, uh, what do you think here? I, I think I like controlling the board and just taking that guy out right away. I think it depends on, on how the deck is played. I feel like this deck that Tom is playing needs to be a bit more aggressive than the mid-range shaman. If I was playing mid-range shaman, I would go for this, no question. But I feel like if this is running Lava Bursts and uh, Doom Hammers and, and, and etc. not running Azurek. I feel like maybe going into the phase is better, but maybe he's looking for something like a healing total next turn to heal his Totem Column. Is it possible with, with the Tusca Totemic? But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Alright, in any case, Tolento does pick up that Zombie Chow. And uh, yeah, it could have been a snipe on that Stoneclaw totem, so maybe Tom feeling good about his decision. Now he has the option to go for a very strong uh, turn 4 play, regardless of what it is, uh, in, whether it's that Shredder or whether it's the uh, Tunnel Trog into the Tuskar Totemic. Uh, what do you now, think you I want to see the, uh, the Tuskar, but I want to see it in the middle, so if the Flametown totem comes down, you mm -hmm. can trade into the, the uh, Juggler, but it's going to be very important where you play to the Tuskar Totemic. Also go for the truck, so I think that would be what I would want to go for. The other option is just to yeah, trade into the uh, juggler and, and not be greedy and, and just go for the setter, but then you lose the totem and then you lose the totem golem, so I don't know. I think I would rather try to risk it. I mean, healing totem would be perfect, flame tongue would be good, totem golem would be good, man to totem would be good, you get the truck in there as well, so... Yes, so many things that are just up to a, a bit of chance here with the both the Tuskar Tartamic and the Knives potentially coming out. So Tom was thinking about the worst case scenario, you know, what could have happened if he uh, decided to go for the Tuskar Tartamic and realized it's not really worth that risk and decides to uh, instead play this Shredder, which does dominate the board right now. You know, question, Tom, I mean, you always do in one game, so I felt like... Taking a chance is, is okay. It's a very small chance, but you could run away with this game. I feel like, yeah, if you, if you have three chances, you can get it lucky eventually. But now, what are we going to see? I think I like Saturday would be so much better now. Ooh, Vitality Total, Total. Like basically the worst. I mean, it is healthy. It does have a lot of health that can't really be cleared too easily, but that's about it. I mean, Clento is not going to be pressing face at all and I mean he, he even has a zombie child on the field if uh, if he wanted to uh, heal Tom up but yeah I mean just a really poor totem there I mean I think you would even prefer one of the four standard totems I think so yeah I mean you could potentially uh, it gets you two more damage because now you could trade into the uh, into the, the murloc with the with the uh, zombie child but now Think about this, if this is going to be happening tomorrow, it's going to be a new Shaman spell and, and so many new Murlocs. <laughs> how, how are you feeling about Finlay Murgleton? Uh, I'm pretty excited about it um, because of the fact that, you know, some some uh, hero powers are pretty similar. So, I mean, maybe we might finally see Control Hunter, you know, because there's a, I think there's a over, there's like a 60% 60 60 chance that you get either the Priest or warrior hero power, and even like the druid is up there as well. So uh, it's just so many good options. The the only problem is drawing it, of course. Um, as far as this game, I mean, is, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, like what I'm th I was thinking about. I I think first off, I feel like you know it's it's potentially playable right now as as the uh, control hunter, mm -hmm. and I, I've I've gotten legend several times with uh, control hunter, but I would be very happy with the paladin one even. Yeah, absolutely. Happy. Paladin. Paladin's a pretty good hero power, right? And then you pair that with Jessica, and then it's completely broken. 
In the case, I wonder, I mean, do you, uh, just to go back uh, on topic to this game, what do you, th I mean, what do you think Clento thinks about this deck right now from Tom? Obviously, we started out with a zombie child, so he was thinking he was mid-range, but now he sees those tunnel trucks, so uh, do you think he's a bit afraid of any bursts coming out of Tom? Probably don't think so. I mean, tunnel truck is a strong card, even in mid-range. I think it's still between that one and and, uh, and zombie child. I mean, tunnel truck is a bit more aggressive, I feel, um, but he's, we see Tom is also running the zombie Chow. But yeah, well played to Tom. I like this uh, trade here into the Belcher. Now, we have the Aldor, but the Aldor isn't the strongest on this board. It will need to be coined out. I feel like a quality strategy might not be too bad here. Yeah, I mean, Kalento has just so many options right here. It's just picking the correct, or not the correct one, but the most optimal one to finish out this game. Aldor, Cog Hammer would be reasonable. Aldor, Coin Treader would be reasonable as well. Uh, obviously, like, uh, your play with the equality... That would be nice, but uh, I mean, Clinton might be worried about Neptulon. He might be worried about Doctor Boom having seen, you know, this uh, this fire elemental hit the field. So could be worried about something in the future and might want to save that quality for, you know, a super rainy day. But looks like he's hovering over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Clinton is just so good that he will just see this. Interesting the trade, how he will go about this. If he will actually. Give the zombie. I mean, the, the health of the shaman doesn't really matter. It's the board state of the shaman. But to finish off with Finley Miracle, then I feel like in Control Hunter also we will have the uh, the mage here power P extremely good because wow. you can go hunt hunt this mark and ping. But wow. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's actually insane. Uh, just so many possibilities. Uh, I guess yeah, you you might want to run it in a sh in a control deck, especially just because uh, you want to guarantee. If you're running, if you're uh, revolving your deck around it, you want to guarantee that you do draw. Tyrion comes into the hand of Kalento, gonna immediately reach for that card, and uh, having just seen the hex use on a lowly pilot shredder, Kalento feels great about playing this on the board. You know, question about that, and Bran isn't going to be yep. the strongest here, gonna so we see. Going to concede is, is <laughs> Tom, and uh, going to be a win for Kalento, finally, with that Paladin, going to be bringing the series back up to one game to two, and uh, again, the pressure is on Tom to win with this Shaman. I guess, yeah, we saw him um, quit almost a little bit early, but I think his idea is, okay, I have to play this deck two more times, and I don't want to give anything away. So Bran, giving Bran away is actually fairly major, I feel. Uh, it's not something you see every, every day in Xiaoman at all. Now we have the Druid matchup. It's going to be a lot stronger, I feel. Uh, for the Xiaoman, this is probably going to be the toughest one, I feel, for Glento, but it's gotten so much better now with the uh, Darnassus. He keeps one rock better. That's going to be definitely for the Darnassus. Double same tongue, mm. not the best. It's more of a late game card, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Just uh, to get those totems hopping and you know killing bigger minions. So, yeah, not going to be what Tom wants to see right here. Clunta with a decision right now, what, uh, whether or not to go for the turn one shade. It can get uh, pretty big and, you know, get some good trades on later. It's going to go for it, uh, slightly surprisingly. Could have waited, maybe gone for a turn two, uh, Innervate Shredder into turn three shade. But, uh, you know, strong play nonetheless. Tom, nothing to do, going to just pass. Uh, talking about this matchup, this, uh, this used to be, you know, considered favored for the shaman back in the olden days but uh, obviously since then it's you know druid has just gotten stronger and stronger and more streamlined whereas shaman you know it just hasn't been able to keep up so uh, I mean it could I'm I'm thinking right now that it's even like druid has pulled so far ahead that I think even that uh, druid would be favored right now what do you think I think it's close uh, I would give a slide that's to the shaman but this shaman is just so unpredictable that it's really hard to tell I mean the strong cards are still there in Shaman. We talk about the hacks, we talk about the fire elemental, we talk about the, uh, I guess, the overwhelming amount of totems, because the, it's all about the AoE, and, and Druid doesn't have that strong AoE when it comes to killing something with two or three health. So, but this this hand is just vastly stronger for Colento. He's had the better start. Tom started off with an anti Darnassus hand. There's no Darnassus. Uh, the Chase as well, there was no uh, snow of storm for that. I don't think Tom is running any storm at all, actually. So it's looking rough for Tom.
yeah, going to be difficult for him to uh, compete in this game. However, he does have those flame tongue totems, and uh, I mean, Clento might not clear most of this board. I mean, it kind of he kind of has to go out of his way to do so, right? I mean, he really wants to play this this shredder, but if he does so, then you know, uh, revealing these shades just to clear out totems might be not the greatest idea. So he could find himself in a bit of trouble uh, to you know the wrath of these totems. But looks like he's not going to make any play. Going to keep his uh, shades stealth so that they get they definitely get a good trade. Interesting play by him. And uh, Tom now is able to kind of play his own shredder. And um, yeah, I mean this this game not looking the worst for Tom, considering he has those shades to potentially deal with these. Uh, or the hexes, excuse me, to deal with the shades if they ever come out. That is true, but there's no earth shock, and the earth shock would be so much cleaner. But now we talk about Colento, uh, about Tom's last turn. He didn't put the uh, shredder in the middle. That's always something that annoys me when I see that. Uh, I've been, you know, <laughs> guilty of doing that myself in the past, but now. To be fair, no, it is yeah. Shaman, and uh, Shaman likes to put the death rattles on the left side so that they can totem hop with their flame tongue totem. So that is a, a different kind of a mentality as well. And uh, say his right, right most minions get cleared, then the totems come out on the right side, and any sort of buffer mm -hmm. minion will be able to buff that. So it's kind of I think it's a, a shaman specific uh, placement here. That's absolutely true. Uh, but now, in this case though, we have to assume that the uh, three two Tashkato Tamek will not live enough for that to matter. So I would still think it's it would be mm -hmm. stronger to have the potential to trade. Right. Into something like a belt shirt, but I would see Colento, you know, not forgetting anything and, and putting the shirt in the middle. Well, yeah, obviously Colento doesn't have any sort of a token that will, you know, appear uh, for his hero power, so it does put it in the middle correctly. Tom now has an interesting situation. I mean, he has an okay trade with a Tarskar Totemic, has the Fire Elemental as well. To trade onto the uh, the shade also has you know he could play something like double fling tongue totem to kill it off or he can go for the rock biter just a lot of options here for Tom but uh, I think probably just gonna go for the flame, fire elemental just the put the most power on the board and yeah he does go for that let's see what he gets out of that shredder it's going to be a nitro but pretty good not bad at all here um wonder if Dr Boom is gonna show up or it's just gonna have to be the uh... This is going to have to be the Ancient of Lore here, but the Keeper isn't a, a horrible thing to play. He's going to heal with the Ancient of Lore? Oh, it's no. so strong. Oh. It doesn't, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm a bit <laughs> confused about the... Uh, I'm a little bit confused about the uh, reason to attack with the Shade then. It's um, a little bit confusing to me. I, he probably felt like he had a pretty good trade onto uh, that Fire Elemental, and now it's forcing Tom to use not only mana, but also a card in order to clear up the 7-1 shade. So uh, I think he's pretty comfortable with it. And yeah, and even Tom doesn't even uh, deal with it, which uh, could mean a lot of damage coming his way. I mean, Clento could do something like, you know, uh, if he couldn't clear the board, maybe even silences just to get the extra 7 damage, which or extra 8 damage, excuse me, which could be pretty, uh, you know, valuable in the end. Speaking of the combo potential of Clento. No question about that here. Uh, yeah, this is looking so strong here for Clento. He misses the juggle pretty hard, but how is he going to be dealing with this? Is he, he, I can't imagine him attacking with this shader. Is he going to be looking at being afraid of the storm? I mean, yeah, I think he's going to trade him, in but... his uh, juggler and then just swing for eight to the face, which is. It's a lot of damage, especially when you're facing a druid, which you know has that combo potential at any time. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true here. Now we have the uh, wow. haunted creeper coming down here, but this is so painful. I mean, Tom, his only option to clear off this shade is to hex it, and it's already gotten massive value. It's cleared a fire elemental, and it's hit his face for eight damage. And to have to hex after all that, and only has two mana remaining after he does so, is just, uh, it's absolutely devastating. Yeah, I mean, this was played on turn one with the Innovator, and it's been paying off, <laughs> off uh, greatly here for Colento. Yeah. 
And even these frogs are a threat to, you know, finish out the game with a savage or so. Yeah, Tom not looking to be in a great spot. Clento looks like he's going to go for potentially a double draw here with the Azure Dregs. Yep. And uh, imagine it's going to be all here. Yeah, yeah. No question. Uh, one savage draw and this should be over. But there's a plot list for Tom though. But this shaman has not been working out for him at all. Losing a second game in a row here now, looking to go up against the Warrior. Historically, a great match for Mitra and Shaman, but I feel like this is a weird combination of, of uh, aggro and mid-range that hasn't been working here for Tom. Yeah, I think this is... I mean, you mentioned that the Druid might be his best chance. Uh, I tend to think that this might be his best chance, uh, because he might have a better uh, time gaining the board. Uh, Druid obviously is pretty decent at doing that with all of its um, ramp options. But um, yeah, I mean, like you say, the Shaman has been struggling. Shaman has been struggling for pretty much everyone in this tournament so far. Uh, Kalento, we saw, was able to win with it earlier, but that was just barely, and it was versus a mill rogue. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how much trouble the, the Shaman has been having thus, uh, thus far in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, historically, if we look at the past, past six months now, Shaman has just been the least played class. People just aren't aren't picking up Shaman, but with the totem golem and the uh, and the trog, there's some hope I feel for Shaman. Tusk Totemic on top of that, we have the Thunder Bluff. So there's that's been doing a lot to try to revive the Shaman. That was a very strong deck before Patron, but when Patron hit, things just started falling apart for Shaman. And, and also the Shielded Mini Bob Master I felt was a big blow to the the Shaman machine. Yeah, especially, I mean, that was the class that was competing for with, I mean, those are the two classes that can make tokens onto the field just with their hero power, right? And uh, Paladin getting those amazing options uh, to be able to compete for their, or, or to compete, excuse me, in this meta, and Shaman getting not much at all has just kind of been pretty devastating. We see a Tuskar Totemic, wants to get potentially a Flame Tongue Totem to make that, uh, that Stone Claw a weapon, but doesn't get it, gets the Healing Totem. Uh, no... Kind of crazy totems thus far. The only thing outside the ordinary has been that vitality, unfortunately. Clento, and this is—I think this is what I was referring to, right? Uh, typically, Druid has a bit more options. Now Clento is kind of reaching for a despite. It's going to clear a totem, or not even going to clear it. He's just going to let it sit. And this gives Tom kind of the green light to keep flooding the board. Um, you know, even if a brawl comes out, the uh, the shredder will come back as a two drop. Most likely. No question. No question. The, the monkey, though, interests me so much. It's such a cool card here. What do you think about the monkey? Is that something you would play in Warrior? Yeah, I think that's something that I would include, just to have that consistency. Brawl comes out right away. Are there two brawls in this deck? I think there's only one, if I remember correctly. All right, so but this is yeah, so important. I mean, now he's just kind of out of stuff. He gets the... Oof, he's yeah. going to aim that totem. Apparently not. Yeah, pretty pretty good outcome for Kalento, but now he's out of uh, ways to mass clear the board, uh, AoE essentially, unless he has Beard and Geddon. But um, yeah, this is essentially just Kalento feeling like, if I brawl now, then with the options that I have in my hand, I can potentially get back the board in the future. And the, uh, going back to that Fierce Monkey question, I feel like it's just a nice 3 drop to play on 3. Sometimes Bash, Bash is just a reactive option, right? And to be able to get a minion on the board that can, uh, you know, just do minion to minion combat and fight while you set up your death fight, for instance, can be really nice. Uh, if you're, you know, your opponent maybe misses their turn 3. Uh, it's like, if your opponent misses your turn 3 and then you just go, okay, well, I guess I missed my turn 3 as well because I have only have answers on turn 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a weakness, uh, particularly in Druid, I feel, and uh, and worry the turn three, you know, because you have great turn fours and great turn twos, but things just kind of fall apart. But yeah, it seems very comparable to Bash. I think it's a great analogy to make in terms of the Bash. And this type of board, yeah, it's, it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. We can't execute coming down. Wow. It's going to be, yeah. We see Kalanto using that execute very... Uh... Just you know, willingly on small smaller minions there, just to compete for the board, compete for tempo. Really interesting to see that. And uh, now not gonna have an easy way to get rid of this uh, fire elemental. Does have a way uh, by using you know his 
Oh, okay. Well, that that there's that. So with the big launcher, I was thinking of using the fire orx with the uh, cool task master, but I guess it's a bit cleaner. Just make just build it up in BGH. Uh, Clento apparently not afraid of any sort of Neptulon or Doctor Boom, realizing that this is uh, this deck is geared a bit smaller. Yeah, I mean, in, in this sort of uh, matchup, Clento just realizes, okay, if I get a head on board, I can definitely run away with this game. If I if I just sit and and let you know Colento crawl into this and, and where you can get all the synergies with the flame tongue for example flame tongue has been dead every single game here for this shaman mm. yeah that that's he just a hasn't really, had the uh, yeah. yeah that's a really big point uh just Colento's super aggressive play using you know executes on smaller minions just getting things out on the board not being afraid of future options and realizing that the minion to minion combat from his creatures will be kind of like a substitute execute. Uh, where you can use those to clear your opponent's board rather than you know saving uh, anything for a rainy day, and it's working out absolutely amazingly here. Tom has, you know, two cards in his hand that are completely useless in that that uh, bloodlust and the flintling totem, and it's all due to Colento realizing the value of tempo and uh, shutting down all Tom's options. You know, question. Uh, so the. Trog seems to be one of the worst minions to get here. You can play it on curve with the totem, but I mean, what can Tom do here? He it just looks like he's given up already here, and he was two zero up, but he's just falling short here with his third deck. Picks Druid and Paladin. Both players have won with Druid and Paladin so far, but yeah, it just seems like Warrior is the stronger third class mm. over the uh, Shaman. But at least Tom will not have to win again with the Shaman later on. <laughs> yeah, this, he's done today with the Shaman. It's not like he's using it for the rest of the day. We've seen a lot of uh, actually reverse all kills. We saw the first two matches of yesterday were for reverse all kills as well. And uh, I mean, that's the part of the reason is why. Part of the reason is because you know having to use all nine decks, it's kind of uh, it's kind of risky to put three very strong decks in the same lineup because you're not able to uh, you know, use those decks in different lineups and pick up wins elsewhere. So you, you, sometimes you see this, you see two strong lineups and then a weaker third deck uh, to you know, just hope that you, you can squeeze out that win, but it's, you know, it's fallen short for many players here. A second flame tongue totem to add insult to injury here. What can he do? What can yeah, he do, honestly? I, I saw him as he reached for his uh, mouse. I thought he was reaching for the escape key right there. Um, yeah, so little to do here. Uh, do, do you know if he runs Lightning Storm? That might be the only thing that gets him back into the game here. But the Shield Maiden hitting the board, that's even something else that can't be cleared by Lightning Storm. And uh, Tom looks like he's going to start dying pretty quickly here. Typically, you don't see, you know... Control Warrior with Burst, but um, I mean, plenty of damage here for Clento uh, to finish out the game in a couple turns, even if these Feral Spurs come out. I mean, he yeah, can. Now it seems to be about like how many turns will Tom last into the 44 fits, but yeah, um, <laughs> he already... it's pretty hard to, hard to watch this actually. Yeah, we already saw the escape just now. He can make a, a 6 3 uh, Feral Spirit if he wants to. <laughs> I, don't know if that, I don't know what that does, but. Um, yeah, gonna gonna do it. It's gonna put up the, the 6-3 Feral Spirit just to kind of get in the way. Maybe he can uh, Bloodlust to start clearing up this board and go from there. But like you say, very painful to watch this go on. Uh, this is pretty annoying for Kalenta though, to be fair. What do you, uh, what do you do here to kind of clear this out? I guess the 2-2 two -two and the, uh, the Cruel Task and the, uh, Armorsmith into the 6-3. And then you clear off the uh, other card. Or you could just use your face too, I suppose. Yeah, the face seems stronger uh, in this case. Yep. But yeah, okay. Tom to four fits this <laughs> one. But uh, uh, I mean, Colento, though, going 2-0, and oh, leading this group here after no sleep. That's pretty impressive. I think his Chinese fans must be happy. Yeah, that's probably going to be the case. I mean, I imagine since Tom is from Taiwan that the Chinese fans might be rooting for Colento here. But yeah, like you say, he is 2-0 and in the group. Uh, he is not out of the woods yet, however, because he doesn't have the best overall game score. He did win 3-2 three and 3-2, three and two and three and two, but I mean, obviously going to take a 3-2 win over a loss any day. Uh, going to be in pretty good position overall. Looks like we're going directly to a break, so we'll see you guys after that. When we come back, we'll see our two qualifiers, Shadowy and Chaoshan, battle it out.